Hi, this is Melanie Kozak, and I'm making this informal video to show how you mix sub-Q remodulin. So, first you take the bottle of your remodulin, put it on your sterile drape. You take your silhouette, which is that has your needle in there for when you're actually changing the site and it also has your tubing so tonight we're only going to be using the tubing portion and you get your cassette as well okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to open the cassette and we can go ahead and get rid of this needle because this needle is not necessary for the process so we go ahead and take the syringe out. My dosage is to fill the syringe completely up to the three milliliter mark. Everyone's dosage is different, but you would draw it back to whatever your dose, dosing line is. And before we take out the remodulin, we do need to clean off the top since this has been in the refrigerator, we don't want any bacteria on it. And then we just gently screw on the syringe and push it down. We let that release so we can draw it back. As you can see, we have all sorts of bubbles in there. We have to get all the bubbles out there's a whole bunch of bubbles in the front. So what I'm going to do is actually flick with my finger and then push the part with the air out and then draw back again to make sure that I have enough medication. I just flick it a couple more times to make sure there's no air hiding anywhere. And we do have a few air bubbles here. Okay, we've pushed them out, we've drawn back, so now we can detach from the vial and now you're actually done with the remodulin vial. So at this point you have a white little cap that comes with the cassette. You're going to put that on. I always like to flip it around to make sure there was no air bubble that I missed. Gently unscrew the bottom of the plunger of the cassette. We're done with that now. So at this point, we need to take off the cap of the new pump that we're going to be going to and clean it before we can use it. So we're going to go ahead and clean that inside, outside, just make sure there is no medication left over on there. Okay. And I am going to put this cassette in there and just do a little gentle turn. The pump is not on yet. The pump does not go on until you take out the battery and put the battery facing the right direction. So that's what we're doing now. We're just going to pull out the battery and turn it around and reattach the battery cover. Okay, you have to screw this on, make sure this goes on tight. And as you can see, the pump is starting up. You can hear it as well tells us that the cartridge has been removed. So we just press the OK button and then we press it again to load the cartridge. And you can hear and see that the cartridge is going down. While this is going on, what I will do is open up the silhouette pack so that I can get my line out that I'm going to use tonight because every time you change your cassette, you're going to be changing the line. We don't need this needle, that's only when you're changing sites. So I'll go ahead and put that to the side. 
And we don't need the cap that comes with it either because that again is for when you're changing sights. So that can go to the side. Okay. You can see this is still loading. It does take a minute to get in there. You can also see that they have a little window on the back that shows you how far the cassette has gone in. And it's also good for looking at to see how much medication is left if you don't actually look at the meter on the front. Okay, it's beeped, which means it's all the way in, so we're going to screw the cap on. Now at this point we can go ahead and take off the little paper on our tubing because what we're going to do now is we are going to take off the white cap we are going to screw on this new tubing and the next option in here on here is to fill the tubing so we're going to press that press it again and it's going to start to fill the tubing it automatically stops at point three but it's it actually fills itself before point three so if you watch it, you'll see drops come down and you can actually stop it yourself before it would normally stop itself. Okay, I have a few drops coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Okay, so we go back to the main menu. We click on the button over here because we're done. And the op next option is to start your delivery. So we're going to go ahead and start the delivery. You always review the programs. It's always a continuous rate. And you just need to make sure that this is what your dosage is. You hit OK. This screen shows you that the pump is on. So what we need to do now is we need to take off the Tegaderm from the old site so that I can hook up the new site. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this off now you'll see that I use gauze pads so that it does not stick to the actual site so that it doesn't pull the site up. Just a little trick that I've learned along the way. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze this and detach that. Now we need to take the cover off the new one and the new one has to get attached. Remember you're always hooking yourself up to a running pump. Okay, you click that in place. You always want to make a little loop in case something gets pulled. That way you have a little leeway and it, the line doesn't actually come out. And, like I said, I like to go ahead and put a gauze pad over it so that I don't have trouble with the actual site coming out. This way it lasts a little bit longer. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the Tegaderm. I'm actually using a larger Tegaderm than I normally use just because I find it easier with my gauze. And we're going to go ahead and place this over the gauze. Making sure that it is sticking down at all the sites without sticking to your shirt <laughs> making sure it's sticking down okay everything is covered the whole site is covered we have the line coming out at the bottom so that's good the next step of what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and shut off the old pump which is very simple to do you can go ahead and unscrew the black cap, unscrew the line, take out your cassette, put your black cap back on, 
Now it's beeping because there's no cartridge in. You don't have to clean the black cap at this point because you're always going to clean it before you uh, go to the new to this pump again. So we're going to take our nickel and unscrew unscrew the battery. Now the only way to shut the pump off is to either take out the battery or as I was taught to flip the battery around so that you always have a battery in there and then go ahead and re-screw it back on. And then at this point we are done mixing, done changing the cassette so you can go ahead and put your pump in your pouch if this is something that you like to use. I like to use this because you have your, your little clip here. You're all done. All you have to do is clean up. So that's pretty much the simple version of how you mix the sub-Q or modulin. Again, you know, everybody's dose is different and everyone's taught different ways. I've just found that covering it with gauze does help keep the site in longer because you're not pulling it off. And you have to always remember that when you hook up to a pump, you want to make sure that the pump is on and running. So I hope that has helped explain it to anybody that has not seen sub-cuber modulin being mixed before. Thank you.